My Hancock, what a plonker. Now, I try not to be overly personal when I'm talking about objectionable politicians. The reason, of course, I object to them isn't because of their personalities, even though many of them aren't exactly full of the milk of human kindness, but because of the policies they impose and often very vulnerable and struggling people, and frankly, the destruction of the social fabric of this country. I think that's pretty reasonable grounds to object to a politician. But when it comes to Matt Hancock specifically, what else is there to say? Now, I think Plonker is more than reasonable given the circumstances. Just a little recap, shall we? He is, of course, the former health secretary, who's one of the chief architects of a catastrophic COVID policy, which led to the deaths, the avoidable deaths of many tens of thousands of our fellow citizens. After breaking his own COVID rules uh, by canoodling with a woman he was having an affair with, he was, of course, forced to resign. Um, then in an attempt to whitewash his reputation, he abdicated his responsibilities as a constituency MP by getting a load of dosh to go on I'm a celebrity gets me out of here which involved eating the the anuses of insects that kind of thing um, he also handed his whatsapps on mass to Isabel Oakshot the journalist who then proceeded to leak them on mass with pretty humiliating consequences well the Mac Hancock clown show never ends and it's back in town he's been caught in a sting by led by donkeys. Let's just have a little look, shall we? So we were we were wondering, do you have a daily rate at the moment? No, I do. I do, yes. It's 10,000 sterling. This is Seoul, home to the headquarters of Hanson Consulting, a South Korean company with plans to expand into the UK and Europe. And this is Su Yon Lee, the company's vice president of external affairs. She's trying to recruit British MPs to join the company's International Advisory Board and has been conducting job interviews on Zoom. Can you see me? No, oh, I, I can't see you yet. There we go. Hello? Oh, hello there. Very <laughs> nice to meet you. Good morning. How are you? Great. Hi. How are you? What these MPs don't know is that Hanson Consulting doesn't actually exist. It's been entirely made up by Led by Donkeys. It has no headquarters, there's no advisory board, no clients, no money and no staff. Oh, and Su Yon Lee is an undercover reporter. I'm Anthony Barnett and for many years I've been investigating the financial interests of politicians of all main parties. I was approached by Led by Donkeys to help them conduct an experiment after the recent scandals over MPs and their second jobs. In the middle of a cost of living crisis when people need their MPs more than ever, would a serving member of parliament still consider taking a job furthering the interests of a foreign company on top of their constituency duties? And how much would they want to be paid? 10,000 sterling. Funny guy. Um, grubby little so-and-so though, if we're going to be honest about it. Now, bear in mind that an MP's salary is £84,144 a year. That puts them in the top 3% or so of earners in Britain. It's been hiked... Uh, by 28% since 2010. All right for some, isn't it? The same MPs, of course, who imposed real terms pay cuts on public sector workers who propped up this country, including during the worst crisis since the war. Then there's this hourly rate. Should we listen to that? Hourly rates... Maybe... I mean, do you have any number in mind that we were thinking? Um... Well, it, it, around 1500 1500 Yeah. Okay. Dear, oh dear. Okay, I could just make this video another excuse to clobber Matt Hancock. Don't get me wrong, quite entertaining, pretty cathartic. I'm not going to pretend I don't enjoy um, just going for Matt Hancock, but I am more interested in the system. And obviously... It is important, I, I, I emphasise that. I interviewed Bernie Sanders recently, name drop. <laughs> um, but the point he made was that all too often we just focus on kind of nefarious individuals rather than looking at the system. And that encourages a kind of illusions that, you know, it's just a few bad people in place and you just replace them with good people when actually it's the system. That's the problem. Um, now, back in January, it was reported in The Guardian and elsewhere that Tory MPs have received uh, collectively over £15 million pounds from second jobs since the last general election that draws the combined income of politicians representing other parties. So if you bear in mind, obviously, 54% um, of MPs are Tories, but they account for 89% of external income over the last three years. Um, now, 
we're going to talk because I've talked there about obviously the Tories love bashing Tories I wrote a book called The Establishment and how they get away with it um, many years ago but I, d- I looked at it the, the reason I'm talking about the kind of uh, not I'm going to widen it out and talk about some examples I wrote about in that book was you know obviously the Tories are the most passionately committed to uh, privatisation and the supremacy of the market and the private sector but when Labour was in government, you got this revolving door. You got lots of Labour MPs taking up second jobs. And I'm going to discuss that and say why it matters, why it's a threat to democracy, in my view. It's not just something that's bad, but it's a threat to democracy. So what I wrote about um, back in uh, the establishment was uh, Patricia Hewitt, for example, who was health secretary under New Labour. Obviously, the health service is supposed to be you know, the shining jewel, the crown, the jewel in the crown of, of, of the Labour Party. And it should be there to defend the National Health Service as publicly run, not as a cash cow for profiteers. But, you know, she, after she stood down, she became much sought after by private health firms who are obviously interested in privatisation of the NHS. Six months after stepping down as health secretary, um, for personal reasons, she, um, she was, for example, ended up uh, working for... Uh, the multinational health and beauty group Alliance Boots, which makes around 40% of its money from NHS contracts. So she was appointed as a special advisor. They paid her £300 an hour. Um, equally, the private equity firm Sinvan, which bought 25 private hospitals from the private healthcare um, giant Bupa, hired her as a special advisor for £55,000. Um, I mean, it didn't stop there. For example, she was taken on by British Telecoms, who made him a 75 grand a year non-executive director. And, you know, she was actually ended up in a similar sting, entrapped in, in 2010, along with two former Labour ministerial colleagues, Jeff Hoon and Stephen Byers, um, where they were um, um, apparently agreeing to lobby for cash. So Stephen Byers described himself as a sort of cab for hire, quite infamously, suggesting his usual daily fee was between three grand and five grand um and you know hoon said that he politicians could open doors uh, he boasted he was looking forward to translating my knowledge and contacts about the international scene it's something that bluntly makes money um there's lots of examples both you know back then of um of of 20 uh of, sorry no more of, of sorry in the house of lords 40 peers having a financial interest in nhs privatization including the former Tory health secretary and Bupa director Virginia Bottomley. Um, you got a Labour peer, would you believe, called Lord Warner, who penned a newspaper article declining the support for the Tories' proposals which extended privatisation to the NHS, but he failed to disclose that he worked for private companies that stood to gain from those policies. Um, I mean, it, we could go on. There's this... What, the reason this matters is, for one thing, it, it cements an establishment. That's why I wrote about it in the establishment and how they get away with it because you end up with MPs and these private companies believing that they have shared common interests so you know a minister will think to themselves well where's my career going to go from here and what private companies are interested in is trying to game the democratic system because obviously MPs and particularly ministers have inner workings of how democracy works so the reason they're getting these MPs and ministers, or they're so interested in in courting them, is because they can then work how to work out how to exploit, you know, getting in, um, in the political system in order to make a load of money, um, and you get, as I've said, the sense of MPs and politicians thinking of themselves as being on the same side, instinctively as big business, having the same shared interests, and and something that they will be able to make, um, huge sums of money from. And that is a menace to democ- that threatens democracy because that's one of the ways that the political system doesn't serve the people, the electorate, but serves private interests because you get MPs basically seeing elected office not as a service and a duty, but something that they can reasonably use as a springboard to make a packet that they wouldn't be able to do if it wasn't for the democratic system. So this is, for me, about the corruption of democracy. It's not just about Matt, Honk- uh, Matt Hancock being a massive plonker. And I will repeat, he really is a massive plonker. But it's about Labour and Tory parties alike, because what happens is when one is in government, because at the moment the Tories in government, so they're obviously the most influential, powerful when it comes to gaming the system. But, you know, the same thing happened with Labour. It did, it did last time. 
And that's the problem. You end up then with two parties converging, partly because both their politicians think that they can make money from doing this. And I think that is why this should be regarded not just as just pathetic and, and amoral or immoral, but actually something which is far, far more pernicious and something that we should all fight against. Please like, subscribe, and do support us on patreon.com forward slash I will see you in a bit.